the 4590 versus 4570 government. Break out your Stetsons and your lever guns because we're talking cowboy rounds today on Ammunition Guides with Ammo.com. Hello, friends and lovers. This is Dave Trillo, and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than Ammo.com. We're going to be comparing two different cartridges today, the 4570 Government, which is still an all-time favorite among uh, people oh, yeah. who like a little more challenge for the long-distance shooting, Definitely. and the 4590, which begs the question, what the heck is the 4590? Chris? Dave, that, that is a very valid question, and I have to tell you, I had to do some digging on this one because this is not a very well-known cartridge, to say the least. But if you like shooting either of these, make sure you click that link down in the description or the pinned comment. Get your free code for $20 off at ammo.com. All we need is your email address to send that code to, so get some money off your favorite cartridges. And, uh, yeah, the 4590, this is an interesting one because... I'm going to be straight with you, Dave. You have to want to shoot a 4590 if you want to try and find something for this because it is a very obscure caliber, technically obsolete at this point because nobody makes ammo for it except for a few custom loaders. And uh, yeah, the 4590 is basically just a bigger 4570, for lack of a better term. Yeah, and you could tell that if, if you knew how the 4570's uh, name worked. The 45 refers to the diameter of a bullet, just like most other uh, cartridges numbers. Yep. The 90 is is the weight of the black powder charge. I had to do a lot of digging on this to find information on the 4590, and there is actually some misnomers when the names come around. If you're looking online, you'll often see the name 4590 Sharp Straight, which is technically a different cartridge than the traditional 4590. Uh, the 4590 Sharp Straight is actually the they refer to it as the 45 2 and 4 tenths of an inch. Uh, so you'll see that either in fraction form or decimal form. So you see like 45 2.4 or 45 and then the number 2 and then 4 tenths like a fraction that you learned in you know elementary school. And these were technically two different cartridges. Now they have the exact same external dimensions. But Winchester made the 4590 and Sharps made the 45 2 and 4 tenths. The difference comes in the type of bullet that they were loaded with. The Winchester came with a lighter bullet, like a 300 grain bullet, which is technically less than what the 4570 was loaded with. But the Sharp Straight version was a 500 grain paper patch bullet, and that is a chunk of lead to say the least. You want to talk about some recoil. 4590 and the 4570 definitely going to uh, let you know that you pulled the trigger. Yes, that's my understanding of it. And I think you're especially going to notice that recoil if you get a Magnum Research BFG 4570 revolver, which is yeah. one of the more interesting pieces of hardware on the market. You're absolutely right, Dave. And I think that's one of the things that is really cool with the 4570 is how long it has been in service. I mean, this round has been made for over 100 years at this point. And there are not a lot of cartridges that can, you know, stake that claim to fame that it is still in use. And it survived the switch from black powder to smokeless powder uh, which is incredibly impressive and uh, yeah there are so many firearms out there chambered in 4570 you've got lever action rifles those are probably the most popular uh, but you know you've got even revolvers cha chambered in 4570 I mean it's crazy well it has that popularity advantage it wasn't issued by the US government for very long True. but uh, I think it's still got enough of a hardcore veteran following that it just kind of got passed down through the ages, the 4570 that is. Yeah, Dave, you're absolutely right. I think the 4570 really got its legs to, to live for so long because of how good of a hunting round this was. Uh, really capable of taking down pretty much anything that North America can throw at it. And I mean, we're talking bears, moose. I mean, the 4570 has just done it all. The 45 is extremely accurate. A skilled shooter can do ridiculous stuff with one. That said, learning how to shoot it, it it's one of the harder to master cartridges because its trajectory is just so steep. Looking at your typical uh, bullet drop for a 45.70, I'm looking at the ballistic chart here. 
at about 300 yards, you're already down 50 inches, and that's quite a bit uh, for such a large round like we have with the 4570. The 4590 is a little bit better because it was designed for longer range shooting, looking at about 38 inches of bullet drop at 300 yards, but still, that's pretty steep compared to some modern cartridges like 300 Win Mag or something like that, that you're probably looking around 20 inches at 300 yards. Yeah, so really, you're, you're buying into the historic significance of uh of the round if you're selecting it it's it's not it's not the best first choice for a layman who's just looking to get into the game and you know i think that's the cool factor of the 4570 is because you've got that heritage with it you feel like you've got your cowboy rifle right if you're into that sort of thing there's nothing better than pulling out the 4570 and you know just going to the range and having a good time with it or going out in the woods i can only imagine the feel of taking a lever action like that out in the woods and deer hunting with it it has to be a really deep connection with nature and history and i think that that's that's something that can't be measured right you know we can look at ballistics tables and stuff like that all day but the cool factor of either of these rounds is just off the chart what caused this one to go extinct? So to yeah, speak. I think that, that that's really kind of what it comes down to. Everybody was looking at the 4570 because the government actually did use it for a time. So there are quite a few more rifles made for the 4570 back in the day. Uh, and I think most people just saw the 4590 as really not being necessary when you have the 4570 being so prevalent, so easy to, you know, reload for, uh, you know, find components for. Now, of course, you could say, well, Chris, they're exactly the same they shoot the same bullet that's true uh, but mm -hmm. finding brass is really the uh, the issue here and finding 4590 brass is a task to say the least uh, especially even today but I, I think it's one of those cartridges that you, you know is it technically better than the 4570 from a ballistic standpoint yes it is uh, you know you've got more powder in there you're gonna have about around 200 FPS faster with about three to 400 more foot-pounds energy. I think just the proliferation of the 4570 made the 4590 really just, uh, you know, obsolete. Had the 4570 not become nearly obsolete at some point? They really did, uh, you know, with their release of the Marlin, uh, the, the re-release of the 1895, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then uh, the Ruger number one and number three really kind of pushed it out there to the point where you can really load some hot stuff uh, in these 4570 rounds. Uh, I know that uh, Buffalo Boar makes some pretty, what uh, shooters would refer to as nuclear loads. So the 4570, that's going to take out a Grizz pretty, uh, pretty reliable? Yeah, they make specific bullets for that. Uh, you know, honestly, a hard cast lead bullet against a Grizzly is going to be probably what you want. You want that penetration. You have to punch through that hide that bone uh, and reach those internal organs and the 4570 is a pretty popular cartridge when it comes to guide guns this, this is another reason like the 4570 is a great hunting round was, was the 4590 was just more of a, a sniping round that has a thousand better alternatives now Pretty much. I mean, the 4590 was made for longer range shooting, for long range target shooting. And th the truth is, if you want to shoot this round, you really have to want to shoot it because uh, good luck. All I'm going to say, good luck finding a rifle for it that is uh, what many of us would consider affordable. Uh, you're really going to have to look for an older, you know, antique firearm. Or if you've really got some coin and you want to drop down some money on a Shiloh Sharps replica, you can. Uh, but those things are pricey. Hey, are either of these just uh, going to be prohibitive amounts of recoil for some people? Because, uh, man, it, that's that's a lot of powder. It is I a lot of powder, and it's going to be uncomfortable. And I think this is one reason why you might, if you want to go with one of these rounds, why the 4570 might be the better choice. Because because we're talking about 33 foot pounds of energy for the uh, the 4570, the 4590. We're talking about 42 and a half uh, wow. foot pounds of recoil, free recoil energy, and that's a lot, and that is uncomfortable to shoot, uh, especially for a long shooting session or something like that. That's a lot of power putting back in your shoulder. Uh, if you're looking to do, you know, some real accurate shooting, these are going to be a little bit harder to handle. It's going to take a little bit more training, uh, you know, more time at the range to get used to that recoil and not flinch when you pull the trigger. Yeah, just another reason to be in favor of the 4570. If you're going to need a lot of this ammo to get decent. I, that's my opinion as well. Uh, and, you know, as I alluded to it earlier, there's basically no one who's making factory 4590 ammo at this point. So you basically are 
you know, cashed into reloading at this point. You're pot committed. If you want to shoot 4590, you have to reload. But uh, you know, it's going to be a lot easier to find components for 4570 or just factory ammo because pretty much everybody makes 4570 now. We got to point out one more uh, advantage that the 4570 might offer to some hunters is that that's a, that's a straight walled cartridge. Yes. Yeah, that's some jurisdictions won't let you hunt with a bottlenecked round. You're absolutely right, and uh, here on public land in Indiana is one of those places that won't let you do it. So if you do live here in the Midwest and you need a straight wall cartridge to hunt with, uh, the 4570 is one of the go-to cartridges that uh, people look to because it's got the power to take down a deer. It's got the power to take down a grizzly for that matter, but uh, it can definitely take down Bambi if it gets in your sights. Yeah, you got to watch out for those grizzlies in Indiana. Yeah, sadly, or thankfully, I should say, uh, not something that we have to worry about too much. Uh, not too much bears around here where I live. But, uh, you know, you go further south into, you know, like Tennessee, Kentucky, into black bear country. And then, of course, in Pacific Northwest and uh, Alaska, where the bigger bears are hanging out, it can be a problem. Uh, and the 4570 has got your back when that happens. Huh. Well, I think this is the easiest uh easiest one to declare a winner for we're going to yeah. recommend the the ammunition that you can buy mm-hmm 100 percent 4570 all the way no question like i said before and i've said it once i'll say it again you have to want to shoot a 4590 because you can't buy ammo for it uh and that's that's going to be a big barrier to entry for a lot of people whereas the 4570 you've got firearms everywhere for it uh, this has such a cult following at this point that uh, the 4570, I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon, so you don't need to worry about uh, it becoming obsolete. The 4570 has endured the test of time, and there's no reason to believe that that's going to stop anytime soon. Yeah. Well, there you have it. There you have it, folks. Absolutely. And uh, if you need to get any ammo for four, your 4570, make sure you click that link down in the description. Click the like and subscribe button as well, and we'll see you out on the range.